Hello guys. <laughs> oh, I actually did it. I sold my beloved Canon 5D Mark II. Since uh, life is moving on and so is the technology, I thought I had to buy a new camera. So this time my new friend is the Panasonic GH4 with a speed booster and the Sigma 18 to 35 mm with aperture 1.8. This is going to be exciting. Back in 2010, I got my hands on the Canon 550D, which became my first DSLR. I was stunned by the video quality, and since then, it was the only camera I needed. As the years passed on, I changed over to Canon 5D Mark II, since I was lucky to win it in a contest. It was better in low light, but other than that, not much improvement. Then, one day, Panasonic GH4 was released, with 4K video, slow motion in full HD, and other really nice features. The Panasonic GH4 seemed like a must-have. However, the downside was a small sensor size inside the camera. Since I already had that Canon 5D Mark II full-frame camera, I had a lot of Canon full-frame lenses, like the 50mm. If I were to use those lenses on the GH4, it would crop the image two times, since the sensor inside the GH4 is twice as small as the full-frame Canon 5D sensor. So, for example, a 50mm on the GH4 would be at 100 mm on the GH4. And since I almost never used that much zoom, it was not an option. The other downside was the low light performance in the GH4. Therefore, I was actually considering buying the Sony A7S, which has an amazing low light performance and a full frame sensor. But one day, I noticed one incredible piece of equipment that would determine my choice. The Metabone Speed Booster was released. Last year, Metabone released the Speed Booster. It's an adapter between Canon EF lenses and Micro Four Third cameras like the GH4. But it's not just an adapter. Inside here is a special lens that increases your lens's maximum aperture by one stop. And also, it makes your lenses wider by 0.7. That means it doesn't only give you more light, but also decreases the cropping inside the camera. I will talk more about that later in the video. So, after some research, I found out that the best and most practical setup I could get for the cheapest amount of money would be to buy the GH4, the Metabone Speed Booster, and a new lens called Sigma 17-35mm with aperture 1.8. I sold my Canon 5D together with a lens so I could get the money I needed to buy the GH4. With the rest of my spare money, I bought the Speed Booster and the Sigma lens, and that became my new setup. And so far, I haven't regret at all. The footage is amazing. So, take a look at my first test, shot in 4K, the GH4, Speed Booster and the Sigma lens. But before you see it, just remember to turn on 4K in the YouTube player, so you will see the best possible quality.
Many people think that 4K itself is what creates the sharp and good looking images. But the video codec inside the camera and the lens is as important. This video is shot in full HD with a video codec that compresses the video to 200 megabit per second. This video is also shot in full HD, but with a 42 megabit per second codec. Do you see the difference? The Canon 5D Mark II records video at maximum 42 megabit per second, while the 5D Mark III has a better codec which records at 92 megabit per second. In other words, you will get better looking video with the 5D Mark III. The GH4 is able to shoot slow motion video at 100 megabit per second, and also the 4K video is shot in 100 megabit per second. Also, you have the opportunity to shoot 200 megabit per second. That makes it much easier to color grade in post since you have less compression. When shooting in slow motion, or variable frame rate as it is called, you can shoot from 2 frames per second to 96 frames per second. So, how is the slow motion inside the camera? Let's test it out. I think 96 frames per second looks great in most cases, but sometimes it looks too much compressed. Even though the slow motion is shot at 100 megabit per second, the 96 frames per second doesn't look as good as for example 60 frames per second. That's because the camera is creating a 100 megabit file per second of video, not for each 24th frame. Within one second, shooting in 24 frames per second will create 24 separate images that in total will be 100 megabit. However, when shooting in 96 frames per second, a lot more images are created within the 100 megabit per second. So each frame is more compressed. Get it? To get a more filmatic look and more dynamic range, you can modify the picture profiles in the GH4. Among the standard profiles, you also have the sign like V and sign like D, which makes the image flat and easier to color grade in post-production. The GH4 got several other nice features, 
like on-screen sound level, focus peaking, zebra stripes, and a nice time-lapse function. You can easily customize the buttons on the GH4 so you can operate it quickly during shooting. The flip screen is genius, and the viewfinder is a must if you are shooting in bright sunlight and don't have any external viewfinders. The built-in viewfinder works surprisingly well, especially with this setup. The camera has a microphone input, a headphone output, a HDMI output, and an AV output. And on the other side, a SD slot and a remote input. Han kunde det. Jag trodde vi var Ken. Vad snackar du? I alla år så har vi brukt Ken. Jag vet inte. Och så nu har jag brukt så mycket tid och krafter och pengar på Ken. Och så skaffar jag ett förbannat kan oss kan oss så ni kan va. Vi må jo kjøpe det kameraet som er best. Jeg vet liksom ikke om jeg kan stole på det her. Så, back to the speed booster. Inside the GS4 there's a small sensor. And that will give you a long depth of field. And that is not great for us filmmakers. A shorter depth of field is one of the factors that creates the film look. This is shot with a long depth of field. And this is shot with a short depth of field. It's much easier to focus on a single subject instead of having too much background noise when shooting with a shallow depth of field. But how will the speed booster help me to get shallow depth of field? Let me explain. On most of the inexpensive cameras, like the Canon 550D or the new 750D, there's an APS-C sensor, which is a bit bigger and therefore gives you a shorter depth of field than the GH4 sensor. And on the full-frame sensor 5D, you get even shorter depth of field. So, when using a full-frame lens on the 5D Mark II, the image is projected in the right way, because the lens is meant for that sensor size. When using the same full-frame lens on an APS-C sensor, a lot of the light will be lost outside the sensor, and therefore it will crop the image. It will crop even more when using that lens on the GH4. So, what does the speed booster do to prevent this? Let's start from the beginning. This is shot with a full frame lens on the full frame sensor. Let's pretend that we want to use the same full frame lens on the APS-C camera without cropping the image. By adding a speed booster to the APS-C camera, the light from the full frame lens will get concentrated through the lens inside the speed booster like a magnifying glass, and make the image hit the sensor just like it was shot on a full frame. Then you will get the same shallow depth of field and the same focal length. In the same way as the speed booster makes the full frame lens work perfectly on the APS-C sensor, you can make the APS-C lens work perfectly on the 4 3rd sensor inside the GH4, and that is exactly what I did. You then get the same shallow depth of field as the APS-C sensor, and also more light. So, by using this combination, I can shoot with aperture 1.2 when using my Sigma 1.8 lens and the speed booster. So shooting in low light conditions is no longer a big issue with the GH4. Overall, the lens is great, it's really sharp even with a wide open aperture. The focus ring and the zoom ring work smooth and nice, and the build quality is really good. The only downside is that it doesn't have an image stabilizer, but since I have started using my rig, it's not a problem. By the way, if you are curious about the rig, I made a video about it. Just check the link in the description. As a conclusion, this setup is exactly what I need for making movies. The A7S is a really good competitor. However, it doesn't record 4K inside the camera and it doesn't have the same slow motion functions as the GH4. You are able to shoot 4K with the Sony A7S, 
but then you need an external recorder, which is really expensive. I can't wait to test the camera even more. There will be a bunch of new videos coming up really soon, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below or at my Facebook page and the X Productions. So stay tuned, subscribe, and thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.